I expected to hear you counting down. I was really surprised how quiet it was. It is good to see you here and uh, to worship together, and that's what we're here for. It is good to see you, but it is really good to be in God's house, in his presence, with his family. And uh, this is just a great day. I'm really thankful. And I hope that uh, this morning uh, we will really enjoy not just seeing one another, but enjoy spending time in God's presence. Enjoy His Spirit speaking into our hearts. Not that He doesn't do it when we're home. I get that. But there's just something special about being in His house. So while I'm up front here and outside of everyone's spit zone, I'm going to have my mask off. I hope that's okay. Don't be freaked out. Brenda was a little bit worried, but we'll be good. Uh, I wanted to just say as we get started this morning, thank you so much uh, for following the precautions that we have to follow. I know it's kind of challenging. Some people are more challenged than others about the no hugging thing. But, yeah, <laughs> no names. <laughs> but uh, it is good to see you here, and thanks so much for doing that. I also wanted to say a very special thank you at the start to everyone who helped to get everything ready because this didn't just poof happen by itself. Uh, we had a lot of help getting uh, things arranged, the little dividers, uh, blocking off pews and rearranging stuff and signs and all the rest. Thank you to everybody who was involved in that. I really appreciate it because that uh, just about killed me if I had to try to think of all of that. Uh, I'll have more announcements later. I just wanted to start with those thank yous. And uh, good to see you here this morning. Let's take a minute to pray together, okay? Precious Father God, I thank you so much for the privilege you give to us to pray. That nothing ever can uh, keep us from talking with you. Nothing ever uh, stops you from hearing our cries. You are our Father who's listening, Lord, for your children to speak to him. And Lord, we're so thankful for that. We thank you for the opportunity to be here in your house today. And we ask, Lord, that your spirit would have free reign. No, no distancing here, Lord, that your spirit would be in us, moving in us and speaking to us, working through us throughout this time of worship together. Hear the songs of our heart. Hear the praise and the adoration we have for you and be pleased with it, Lord. And during this time, speak into our lives, telling us exactly what we need to hear. And we'll give you the glory and the praise for it always as we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, just a reminder, while we're singing, if you want to sing, you really should put your mask on because it like shoots everything out all over the place. Uh, but uh, I encourage you, sing with all your heart with a mask on. And if you want to just hum and worship in your heart, that's okay too, right? Mm -hmm. You guys need to sing, right? <laughs> Let's worship our Lord together. Let's all stand if you're able. Have you been looking forward to this day, to gathering together in his name? Well, so let's join together and call out to him and prepare ourselves to invite him to show us his glory and his power.
That's a Hebrew word for praise the Lord. So let's praise together and we'll say these words from Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the counsel of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds. His righteousness endures forever. Just a couple quick announcements, family business we got to take care of today. Uh, first of all, uh, things are happening. Like, did you realize that? Sometimes I, I get so caught up in the nothing's going on, everything's canceled, that I forget things are happening. And so uh, tomorrow, Monday, we're going to be hosting a blood drive. Red Cross is coming in for a blood drive. Uh, and 
that I believe, I didn't check this morning, I should have, uh, I believe there's still spaces available. You can register online. The information's in the bulletin. You can uh, look at that, and uh, if you are like, would like to give blood, I encourage you to do so. Uh, that's tomorrow, from 1 to 6, so it's tomorrow afternoon, all right? Uh, other things that have changed and are happening, uh, we're not going to be receiving an offering like passing the plates, uh, but there is an offering box, and the offering plates are in the back as well, uh, and you can drop your offering there on the way out uh, or on the way in if you thought of that ahead of time. Uh, and we're going to continue that over the next couple weeks at least and see how that goes. So that's just information for you. You can either drop your offering on the way into worship or on your way out. Uh, so keep that in mind. Got it? All right, good. I think that that's it as far as announcements go. <clears throat> There's other stuff in the bulletin, and you should look at that. Will you? They work really well as fans. Ooh, I can't do that with my mic on. They work really well as fans. But uh, you can read them too, all right? All right, I wanted to have just a short children's sermon today. So everyone who feels like a child, tune in here for a second, okay? Uh, got some special thoughts for kids. Kids, will you ra- wave your hand at me so I can see where you're at? Because you're shorter and I can't see you all the time. Okay, there, good. Good to see you. Uh, it's Father's Day today. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a special day to honor your dad. And the Bible talks about God as our father. And that's what I wanted us to think about this morning. He talks about God as our father so we could a little better understand who, who God is like, what he's like. One thing that you can know about God is that he loves you. I mean, there's a lots of things that the Bible tells us about God. This is the one I want to think about today. God loves you, just like a dad loves his kids. In Psalm 103, in verse 13, it says, As a father loves his children, so the Lord loves those who fear him. Did you hear that? Just as, That's about as direct as it can get. God loves you. But David also wrote in this same song about, psalm about how much God loves you, just so we get a better idea of what that looks like. Now, kids, help me out. If you would... I give you permission right now to stand on the pew so I can see you. Come on, you can do it. Don't want to stand on the pew? All right. Still listen, though, because I wanted you to think about it. I wanted to be able to see you a little better. I noticed when you were coming in that a lot of you have gotten taller than I remember you over the last couple months. I just wanted to see that again today. But I wondered, who was the tallest who's standing here? Other than, I'm the only one standing. Well, Brent's standing. Brent's taller than me. But, you know, of our kids, who would be the tallest? You have to think about it. I want you to think about how much God loves you. In, also in Psalm 103, the, David wrote, For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his faithful love toward those who fear him. As far as the East is from the west. So far has he removed our transgressions from us. David was writing this psalm about God so that we could see how much he loves us. And it says here that God's love is higher than the tallest one here today. Right? Is that right? No, that's not. Well, it is, but that's not all. That's not quite what he said. He said that God's love is as high as the ceiling in this church. No, it didn't say that either, did it? It said that God's love is higher than the heavens. God loves you to the sky and back again. You can't measure it. He went on to say that His love is as wide as you can spread your arms. No, he didn't say that, did he? He said his love is long farther than the east is from the west. And because we live on a globe, on a round planet, it never, you can't get there. It's forever. That's how much God loves you. 
God's love for those who respect and obey him is as high as the sky, as far as the east is from the west. That's just how God feels about you. John 3.16, we learn this one when we're pretty young even sometimes in church. That God loved the world in this way. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God gave Jesus to die on the cross for you so that you and I could be forgiven of our sins, so that our sins, our transgressions, could be removed as far as the east is from the west, never to be remembered against us again. That means that when you confess your sins to God, He forgives you completely. No little note in the corner reminding Him of what you've done. No grudge held against you. Nothing. Complete forgiveness. That's how much our Father God loves us. Loves you. Isn't that good news? It is. So, when you think about Father's Day today, I know you love your dad, right? You should. (laughs) Tell him you love him. But remember, when you think about your dad and how much you love him, know that he loves you that much and more. Dads are like that, okay? They may not say it all the time or show it very well, but they do. But also think about your heavenly father and how much he loves you, all right? Because God loves you to the sky and back. And he showed that love by making it possible for your sins to be forgiven forever. That makes it a great Father's Day. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for the truth of your word. The things that you teach us, Lord, you show us so clearly just how very much you love us. I ask that each one of us, from the very youngest to the very oldest, would remember today they are greatly, greatly loved. Thank you, Father. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. How wise is God? Nothing, nothing can happen in this world without God's permission. We're going through a time that's tough. But have confidence. God's got a reason and a purpose and we need to pray that his will be done. Hallelujah. Our Heavenly Father, as we come before you, as the pastor was saying, Lord, you've you've removed our sins from us as far as the east and to the west. And Lord, as far as we would travel, they're gone. And we praise you, we praise you. Father, I pray that 
Our time together today will please you. Will please you. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and all, all that is in me. And forget not his many benefits. O oh Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this people. My brothers and my sisters, thank you for them. Thank you for Pastor Dave and Brenda. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that the pastor's words will not be void, but Lord, they will accomplish that what you have purposed them to do. And Father, help us to be very attentive and to receive that which is for us. Thank you again, Lord. Thank you for this people. In Jesus' name, amen. Ah, oh. on the uh, back of your bulletin is a responsive reading. We're going to look to God's word to get today from Hebrews chapter 12. And, uh, and so I'd like for us to read together. All right. If you would stand with me out of respect to God's word and uh, you'll see your part in bold. Let's read God's word together. Therefore, since we also have such a large cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every hindrance and the sin that so easily ensnares us. For the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. In struggling against sin, you have not resisted to the point of shedding your blood, and yet you have forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons. Endure suffering as discipline. God is dealing with you as sons. For what son is there that a father does not discipline? Furthermore, we had human fathers discipline us, and we respected them. Shouldn't we submit even more to the Father of spirits and live? No discipline seems enjoyable at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Pray God will bless his word to our hearts this morning. Thanks. You can have a seat. Well, I've said before, and I've heard it already all today a number of times, Happy Father's Day. It, it seems a little self-serving when I say it, doesn't it? I, I don't know. Still today, I'm going to talk about fathers and two fathers. But really, the point impacts all of us. Being a father, dads, we know this. 
Being a father is a big responsibility. And it's not always easy. Just coming up with those bad dad jokes, it takes a lot of effort. Except for Jeff, they come naturally to him. We all know that. Like, it, it takes guts to be an organ donor. See? Oh. But a blood donor is much easier. That just adds to the announcement this morning, okay, just so you know. Your bicycle can't stand up by itself because it's too tired. See? Yeah, I got Jeff now. <laughs> There's a whole list of them in your bulletin for you, dads, saving you a little bit of energy today. Share them freely with everyone in your family, all right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Seriously, though, guys, you're the one responsible to lead and protect your family. And that responsibility is on your shoulders, and that's a heavy burden. And we recognize that. Plus, we live in a society that's increasingly hostile to us. Never ever have I considered that the words toxic and masculinity would go together. Just never thought that. Fathers are portrayed, movies, TV, out there as being clueless, bumblers, inconsiderate, unreasonable, selfish, out of touch, or just plain absent. And while those things are true of some, I totally get that. Fathers don't deserve that kind of generalization. It just makes it that much harder for us to be the dads that God has called us to be. Most fathers are hardworking men who invest time and capital and love into their wife and their children. And I just want to acknowledge that today and say, thank you. Happy Father's Day. But the encouragement of Scripture this morning is that no matter how hard it is to do this dad thing, no matter how challenging it is to be the father that you know you want to be, you can do this. You can do this. Yes, it is not easy. But being a good father is worth it. And most importantly, you don't have to face that struggle alone. Your heavenly father is your model. He loves you. And he will never give up on you. Don't give up on him. We read from Hebrews chapter 12 just a moment ago, and you can keep looking at that on, on the, your sheet there in your, in your Bible. But I want you to notice that chapter 12 begins with the word, therefore. And I was always taught when you see in Scripture the word, therefore, you say, what's that therefore? It goes back to referencing what he was talking about in chapter 11 and the great men and women of faith who had come before us. The writer of Hebrews pictures them as a, a huge stadium-filling crowd watching you as you live your life, as you run your race for God, just like they had already done. Their example and their shouting, cheering you on, is there to encourage you to run with endurance, the race that lies before you. The unspoken truth is that the race will be challenging. And as we just said, being a father is one of the parts of that. And it's difficult. And it will tempt you to give up when it gets hard. The point that the writer of Hebrews is making is so very clear. Don't give up. Keep pressing forward. Run the race that's set before you. That's what that first part of chapter 12 is talking about. Our attention is then drawn from the crowd of cheering onlookers to the greatest motivator for us to live 
our life of faith. Jesus himself. The writer of Hebrews is saying, think about him and the hostility and the hardship that he endured. When your teenager talks back to you, I, I mean, I hear that happens. I, don't, I wouldn't assume that on everybody. But when, when that, something like that happens, don't give up. Think about Jesus and the hardship that he endured. For the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the Father. Consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself. Why? So that you won't grow weary and give up. Remembering that Jesus has endured even more than we're going through is to encourage us so that we don't give up when it gets hard because it gets hard. That's where I was expecting amen from everybody. It gets hard. Don't give up. I love verse 4 that we read because it reinforces my second favorite saying. My favorite saying, in case you haven't heard it so far, is what could possibly go wrong? I like to say that a lot. It reminds me of a lot of different things. My second favorite saying is it could be worse. It might be yet. You see, we, in my struggle against my sin nature and the attacks of this sinful world, the writer of Hebrews reminds me I've not yet resisted to the point of shedding my own blood. Jesus did in his struggle for me, but he's not called me to do that yet. So it could be worse. It might be yet, but it could be worse. Then the chapter takes a slight turn in thinking, recognizing that hard, the hardship of living for Jesus may not entirely be about living in a hostile environment. I mean, there are times it's very clear to us we live in a hostile environment. We're in enemy, enemy territory as Jesus followers, okay? You need to know that. But sometimes it's not all, not all about the hostile environment. We're reminded that this life is a lot like a father-child relationship where God's the father and we're the children. And sometimes the hardship that we face is our own father's discipline. Now, before we begin talking about this, I need to be sure that we're all on the same page here because there is a difference between discipline and abuse. I need to be perfectly clear about this. God will discipline you. He will never abuse you. Okay? We need to be crystal clear on that. God will discipline you, but he will never abuse you. And just as a little aside for the dads who are here today, that's the model that we need to follow in raising our kids. You need to discipline your children. Never abuse them, though. There's a difference. You can start with understanding what abuse is to see what, it's not, what we're not supposed to do. The legal definition of child abuse is an act or a failure to act on the part of a parent that results in the death, serious physical or emotional harm, sexual abuse or exploitation of a child, uh, or which places the child in an imminent risk of serious harm. I had to read it because I didn't memorize that. But it makes perfect sense. That's what abuse is, right? Scripture says it this way. Fathers, don't stir up anger in your children, but bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. When it talks about stirring up anger, that's abuse. Don't do it. It's an act or a failure to act that results in lasting anger, resentment, and hostility. And it's not good. Things like being overprotective, where you 
just limit your child's freedom so much that they feel like they're, they're just going to die. <laughs> they're going to starve. Or showing favoritism. I love, I love your brother more than you or your, your sister more than you, depending how that works out in your family, you know. Having unreasonable expectations where we ask our kids to do something that they are physically, mentally unable to do. Where we discourage or just a lack of encouragement in their lives. Fault finding, where we use the word always and never. You always do this, you never do that. Conditional love, where we say, if you do this, then I'll love you, but if you don't, forget it. Or the very obvious, angry, verbal, physical abuse, yeah. That, those are the obvious things. But all those things stir up anger in our children. And God says, don't do that. Don't do that. Simply because God doesn't do that. God will never abuse you. That's why I want you to understand this. Not, dads, just so we don't abuse our kids. Yes, that's important. But I want you to understand it, all of us to understand this, because we can expect that to never happen to us from God. That's not how he acts. He will discipline you, but he'll never abuse you. That's what fathers do when they love their children. Discipline is that training, that teaching, that expectation, reasonable expectation that says you need to grow up. <laughs> That's, in essence, what it works as. I need you to be better. I need you to take a step closer to what you should be as an adult. That's discipline. And discipline, verse 11 really states the obvious there. No discipline seems pleasant at the time. We don't like it. Because we get comfortable where we're at. And discipline moves us beyond what we're comfortable with. Of course it's not pleasant at the time. But discipline is for our good. Its goal is education and growth. Discipline's temperament is calm. And its mood is dignified. When discipline looks like that, we're able to see the love of the Father and the good that will result from it. And it helps us to grow. Remember that God's discipline is because he loves you. He loves you. That's the motivation behind it all. Discipline is God saying, I love you way too much to let you continue on the course that you're headed. I love you way too much to allow you to continue this destructive behavior. I love you way too much for you to remain in sin without redirecting you, without teaching you, without showing you what's right. A father's love, like God's love, will do whatever it takes to achieve the best results for their children. Think about that when you think of your heavenly father. He'll do whatever it takes to achieve the best result in your life. How do I know that? He sent his son to die for us. He sent Jesus to die so that your sins could be forgiven. If he's willing to do that, he's willing to do anything for your good. And Hebrews describes for it a little bit a little bit here about what the good results of sharing God's love and discipline is all about. It says that we get to share in his holiness in verse 10. He describes it as the peaceful fruit of righteousness in verse 11. 
Because his discipline, this is the result of it. His discipline makes us good, holy in Jesus. Okay? Makes us good. And thereby makes us at peace with our own conscience as well as at peace with God. That's the benefit of discipline. God's love, which includes discipline, results in good things for his children. That's what the writer of Hebrews wants us to understand here today. Now, I know that was a long passage with lots in it, and I talked a lot about it already, but there's two big takeaways that, about God that I want us to be sure and hang on to. Because God is the perfect father, he will never abuse you. Remember that. Never, ever, 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 ever. If something's going on in your life, it's abusive. It did not come from God. And discipline that is not pleasant, although you may think it's really, really, really unpleasant, it's not abuse. It's for your good. Remember that. Because he loves you, he will discipline you. Count on it. You and I both know that discipline is never enjoyable at the time. But when you remember it's coming from a heart of love and it will result in lessons learned and real growth and character, maybe it's not so bad after all. C.S. Lewis put it this way, and I love this quote. He said, if you think of this world as a place intended simply for your happiness, you will find it quite intolerable. Think of it as a place of training and correction it's not so bad. That's what this chapter is trying to get across for you and for me. Consider that the hardships and challenges in life may be discipline that improves you so, you don't, so that you don't give up. Therefore, because we know those two things about God, and recognize the goal of his discipline in our lives. He ends this passage by saying, So strengthen your tired hands and weak knees, and make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be turned aside, but be healed instead. Strengthen your weak arms and knees. How do you do that? You exercise them. You pick up the weight that you have to carry, and it strengthens you. Make a straight path for your feet. Point your toes towards Jesus and what he wants in your life, and go there. Quit with all the detours and roundabouts. so that the lame may not be turned aside, but healed instead. All those things that limit us, challenge us, and hold us back, the lameness of our lives, can be healed when we follow Jesus. Dads, I know we have a difficult task as fathers, and every Jesus follower here has the complicated challenge of living as God's child in this world but remember the kind of Father God who we have. Remember that He is a Father God that disciplines us because He loves us to improve us. Embrace it and be healed. Get ready for the discipline to come. Allow it to heal you, not cripple you. And again, don't give up when it gets hard. Because it's going to get hard. (laughs) Whether your earthly father is seeking to follow God or not, whether he's modeling Christ-like discipline or even if he's abusive, don't forget God, your heavenly father, is your model. He loves you. He will never give up on you. Don't give up on him. Let's pray. 
Precious Father God, I thank you so much for this truth from your word. The lessons that you desire to teach us so that we can grow in our faith to be more like you. Lord, I ask that your spirit would apply these things to our hearts in ways that uh, will indeed cause us to grow. And that we would be reminded that all of those hardships and trials are worth it. And we'll give you the praise and the glory for it always, Lord. As we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I can't steer. <laughs> so we prepare to sing this song. Um, Jesus had some words for us dads. If we can look at those words. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Let's all stand.
Thanks. You can have a seat for just a minute because there's something happening that's not in the bulletin. <laughs> uh-oh. Did someone say uh-oh? <laughs> uh, this is just something we found out about just last week. Um, I want to read with, for you a scripture from Romans chapter 8. That says, we know that God works together for all things for the ultimate good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. This one right here, Krista, has been called according to God's purpose to serve God somewhere else now. Two Rivers Church in Binghamton, right? Yes. I got to look at my notes so I don't say something stupid. <laughs> She's going to be uh, going there to serve as media product, uh, serve in media production as the head of social media communication. That's, I thought it was kind of long. You have to have a big door for that, right? We believe that God intends to use you, Krista, in great ways. We've always thought that. Because it's for his kingdom. We're sad that you won't be continuing to worship with us here. That makes us sad. But we also rejoice with you as we consider how God's going to use you and bless you and make you a blessing to so many others at Two Rivers Church. Yeah, that's good. We know that because that's how you've blessed us here. And we're grateful. Isaiah heard the voice of the Lord asking him, who will I send? Who will go for me? And Isaiah responded, here I am, send me. So Krista, we view this moment for you like Isaiah, responding to God's call and saying, here I am, Lord, send me. And so we rejoice with you. We support you in this calling and we commit ourselves to continue to pray for you and the work that you're going to be doing for God wherever that may be. We pray that God's love will continue to encourage and guide you in your walk with him and also in your service for him. Now that I've sufficiently made you cry, <laughs> I want to give you an opportunity to share just a little bit with us about what you're thinking about this move. Well, of course, I want to thank everybody. You guys have been my church family for eight years. I moved to this church when I was a sophomore in high school. And you guys have seen me through a lot of different things, my ups and my downs. You've seen me come to church in sweatpants and three hours late and, like, coming at the end of the service. And you, you guys pray over me and bless me. But you've also seen me through some great times where I've traveled across the world and down it over in Vermont and all over the place. So I just want to thank you for being my church family for so long. Um, this was definitely not an easy decision to make. I really had to pray about it for a really long time. But I'm really excited and I feel so blessed to have you guys behind me and um, knowing that I can always come home to here if anything ever happens. So thank you so much, everybody. This is where we would normally all gather around, put hands on your shoulders, and pray for you. Just stretch out your hand and just offer your praise and your uh, blessing on Krista as Mike leads us in prayer. Lord, we thank you for the time that you've had Krista here. Lord, we thank you for the growth in her life that she's found you to be a good, good father. I want to pray that you would find your love deep and your peace, uh, all surrounding, that you call her deeper and deeper into you. We thank you for that. And we pray that you would bless uh, her skills and abilities and gifts that you've given her in uh, making connections with the community and to this church, uh, to the new church, and to, uh, Lord, connect to those people 
with the whole purpose to connect them to you. We thank you, Lord, for her, for her life. We pray her blessing, blessing is on her, Lord, your blessings on her as she goes. And uh, look forward to seeing her often <laughs> and hear the good reports. Thank you, Lord. She has one more job to do here. Sing. <laughs> one more song. We'll, we'll stand as we sing, if we will. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving your only son for me. Gracious Father, God, we thank you so much for this amazing, undeserved love that you have lavished on us. Lord, allow the reality of it to sink deep into our minds and our hearts. Allow that truth, Lord, to challenge us. In the way we make our choices, the way we live our lives. Allow that truth, Lord, to draw us closer and closer and closer to you every moment of every day. Forgive us, Lord, for our sins. Forgive us for the times when we forget your love for us. Forgive us for the times when we turn a, a deaf ear to your loving voice guiding us. And like that good, good father, welcome us back with open arms when we repent and return. And Lord, we'll give you the praise and the glory for it, for all of that. Lord, we don't deserve any of it. And we are grateful. Help us to be even more grateful.
as we face this week, as we see the challenges that we have to deal with, as we see your discipline at work in us, as unpleasant as it may seem. May we never forget your love's behind it all. And Lord, we will give you the praise for that always. So we ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Let's go with God. <laughs>